everyone in this video we'll discuss a very important topic the very basics of portfolio construction things that are not taught in any mba life teaches them the real hard way but it takes 20 30 years to reach a stage where you can be confident of your approach by that time often it is too late for most people to adapt and maximize their portfolio gains let's suppose we want to start with a journey we know there's a point called a which is a starting point this is what we know with certainty where we are then we have a vague idea of what we want to do this is point b now when we start most of us have some sort of idea or a plan in mind that this is how we will achieve our goals we often come across situations where you have to take a decision whether you want to go left or right it is for sure not a sequential process we will come across situations where we have to backtrack we have gone the wrong way we have to adapt with this basic background let's now extrapolate this to your portfolio there are few strategies for managing your portfolio first one is aggressive if you have the risk appetite then you can go for high risk high gains conservative if you can't take risks it's okay but again your dreams aspirations and goals have to be aligned with your risk appetite moderate is a balancing act income oriented as you move towards financial retirement or physical retirement you tend to move towards investments which are income oriented maybe rental yield maybe dividends fixed deposits tax efficient you might have heard that elon musk changes state from california to texas because there were tax breaks a lot of people move at times to locations or they choose business practices where they can save taxes for example a lot of founders don't take salaries they take stocks there are three key elements of portfolio management the biggest one is diversification a lot of us remain concentrated in one or two asset classes only this could be real estate equity maybe fixed deposits and we don't diversify till a very late time and then when you do we don't get maximum portfolio gains rebalancing from time to time we need to recalibrate our portfolio we might have to move money from asset a to asset b if our strategy goes wrong we may have to move money completely out of our asset class the third one is tax efficiency tax is a significant amount for most of us tax becomes 30 to 35% as our income increases so a third of our portfolio gains may go into tax if we don't manage it well i'll now quickly take you through some of the most popular investment instruments most of us start with something called fixed deposit we deposit money in provident funds and personal provident funds which is ppf the second instrument most of us start with is equity this could be a listed company on say nsc or bse or it could be the company you work for where you have got some sort of stock options gold for most of us the journey into gold begins around the time of our marriages and after that gold in the form of jewelry keeps entering our household from time to time most of us have bought an apartment or aspire to buy an apartment to live in some of us want second or third one also which we could rent out for cash flow as our portfolio grows if we have surplus cash many of us also want to buy land especially from long term perspective land can exponentially grow your wealth the new age investors have newer instruments like crypto Now, the next very important topic is cagr most of us have been told that a cagr of 14 to 15% is great i talked to a good friend recently i asked what is the portfolio again for 2023 he was very happy more than 40% as what is the absolute amount he said 20 lakh i said there is no way you have a 50 lakh kind of portfolio you have several crores worth of portfolio but then he said oh that is not equity that is fds my house my plot i don't consider all of that in this cagr i was amused at the logic but this is the logic that many of us follow but this is what closes our eyes and we don't accept that the portfolio gains are actually not even 14% if you have a larger portfolio then the portfolio gains across all asset classes is mostly 8 9% 10% barely beating inflation that is why most of us keep on working very hard for salary till about 55 60 at least at times even beyond that because we don't know where to stop now cagr at portfolio level suppose you want to double your money in 4 years you need a cagr across your portfolio of 19% if you have 5 years then 15% 7 years 10.5% if you want to double your money in 10 years then pre tax fds are good as well 7.2% now let me take a very simple example suppose you want to double your money from 1 lakh to 2 lakh you have diversified the portfolio you have put 25000 in fd then you have 25000 in bonds and 50000 in stocks fds and bonds have more or less standard returns now at the end of say 4 years the money we know in fd will become 30900 34000 in case of bonds now to double the money we will need to make this 50000 1 lakh 35000 we need a cagr of 32% which means 32% per annum now we could change the portfolio composition for example we could move everything to stocks but then the risk will become too high let's suppose we decide to reduce the weightage on fd and bonds so we make this 15000 
and 15,000 for bonds. As a result, we need to grow stocks now at 27%. This also is a big deal. There are years when your stock could double, triple also. But there are times when your stock does nothing for 4-5 years. For example, HDFC Bank, if you see last 3-4 years, it has hardly given any gains to the long-term investors. So understanding this concept of CAGR along with a diversified portfolio is very important. Otherwise, you will never be able to calculate your realistic gains. Now, this table may sound a little complex. This is a very simple table. These are the years. Then this is the amount table. You want to grow 1 lakh to 1 lakh 25,000, 1 lakh 50,000. Now, the theme which is in my mind is doubling my portfolio in 4 years. This is the 1, 2, 3, 4 series I keep talking about. 4 years, 2 lakh as the intended gain. So, 18.9% CAGR at portfolio level. Now, what influences our portfolio composition? There are various factors. I'll briefly touch upon some of them. We all know Warren Buffett started somewhere in his teens around 12 or 13 with a very basic business of selling soda bottles. So his portfolio growth has been something like this. But he has made 80 to 90% of his portfolio gains after he turned say 80 or 85. If we are starting say at 35 or 40, then we have already spent 20 years more than Warren Buffett. Risk appetite, this keeps changing from time to time. When you just start working, say around 23, 24, that is the time when your risk appetite is highest. Even if you burn your entire month's salary, you can restart. You have enough years to regain what you have lost. I've created a detailed video explaining this entire concept. I'll leave a link for it. If you have not seen it, do watch it. It explains in detail using an Excel table how your risk appetite changes with years and with various circumstances. Timing, many of us have been waiting for investing in the stock market in India for a long time. On Tuesday, many, many good stocks, popular stocks were down 25%. How many people invested? When the pandemic struck, not too many people wanted to get into stock market. There was so much uncertainty. Everyone chose to be on cash. Salaries accumulated for months and maybe an year in people's accounts that didn't get deployed. Stock market tanked by about 40%. Then suddenly the stock market went up like this. The stock market has nearly more than doubled since that time. Many people are still waiting for those levels. The reason I am taking the example of pandemic, it was a terrible time for humanity, but it was a wonderful time for investors. From the start to the end of pandemic, gold nearly became 2x. Again, a lot of people did not even realize this. Inheritance, the money that you earn is your money. That gives extra cash. You don't have to work for it. If you don't invest it well enough, you will probably burn it over liabilities or over luxuries that you probably don't need. For example, a house which is larger than what you need, a car that is larger than what you need, dependencies, if you have parents who are dependent upon you, if you have kids who will go to college soon, this is also in some way equivalent to liabilities. Liabilities also include say EMIs, this could be for car, house, education. So dependencies, liabilities, if there are a lot of them, your risk appetite reduces a lot. You can't put money into aggressive instruments. You can't change your job. You can't get into a startup. Extra hands, if you're expecting to marry soon whether your spouse would be working, then the income will get doubled. Maybe your kid will finish the college and they will start working. Maybe you sell off a piece of land which was lying dead and put that money into say a fixed deposit. That will lead to a significant amount of monthly return. That adds an extra hand which is not a human hand but you get passive income out of it. All of these increase your risk appetite continuously. I took the Bitcoin example. Your geography may encourage certain instruments in some geographies like US, the rental yield is very close to your EMI. So it is very lucrative to buy apartments for rental purposes. Still cycle, about 10-15 years back when Bitcoin was starting, no one cared for it. There are jokes where people paid for burgers using Bitcoins. They could have bought an entire McDonald's now with the same Bitcoin. There was a time when companies like say REC, PFC were lying dead. P was less than 2. No one wanted them. Now suddenly they have become 4x, 5x in size. So there are cycles for many, many businesses. If you can understand those cycles, you can make a lot of money by investing when the cycle is down. But yes, you have to have a conviction that the up cycle will come soon. Finally, population demographic. If you live in an area where there is a lot of peer pressure to buy bigger houses or maybe buy bigger cars. So all of these things put a lot of pressure on you. You'll have to spend a lot of money in social obligations. Now the most important part of the video We'll talk about short term, medium term, long term and retirement goals and classify various assets where they belong. The first category is risk management assets. There are times in life when you have to first mitigate risks. For example, what happens if you lose a job? So instruments like fixed deposits. I've also talked in my videos about fixed deposits and taking ODs on them. 
so that you don't have to keep too much money in your saving bank balance. Gold, tulips, all these help a lot with risk management in the short term. Medium term FD, gold, tulips. The reason gold figures here is gold is an excellent hedge or insurance against high inflation. There are some periods in every decade when the inflation skyrockets. At that time, gold will save you because gold typically goes up when the inflation is high. Long term gold, provident fund, PPF, ULIPS, retirement, you have already made your money, you just need protection from inflation. Capital appreciation assets, this is really important, especially in the early years of your life. This is where compounding happens. Equity and a home like an apartment in medium term lead to capital appreciation. An apartment has a shelf life. Yes, apartments run for 25-30 years, but investment wise, their value rises till they're about 10-12 years old. After that, the value becomes stagnant and then it becomes indexed with respect to the prevailing rates in the area. Land, this is not apartment, this is land or a plot, equity, gold. Note that I have not put gold in medium term also because you can't predict the cycle of gold. Gold does not go up continuously. Gold goes up in bursts. Retirement wise, land, equity, gold. Note that land and gold are the only two assets which cannot be destroyed. Low risk, low gain, especially from cash flow perspective. Short term, FD, government bonds. The returns are low, but they are considered safe. Government can print money. In FD, government guarantees 5 lakh rupees worth of insurance for you. But note that the tax adjusted and inflation adjusted return is often negative. There is a guaranteed risk of 100% of this erosion. Medium term again, FDs and government bonds. You could also go for highly rated private bonds. There are certain companies whose paper is AAA rated. So you could go for those long term government bonds, systematic withdrawal plans, which means you might have a deposit say of 5 lakh rupees. You take out 5,000 rupees every month. Whatever is the remaining amount that keeps growing. This may become zero someday. Retirement also government bonds, SWP. I've added FD also back into retirement for the simple reason that a lot of senior citizens prefer money in their hand as liquidity and there is reasonable cash flow. Yes, most people still don't know or don't want to accept that there is a negative return. Medium risk, medium gain cash flow, short term bond. It is not FD here any longer. Medium term also bond, long term bond, equity, real estate, rent. Equity is high quality equity with medium risk profile. Real estate rent is important because if you bought the property at a reasonable time, the rental yield towards the long term may become very good. For retirement also bond, equity, real estate rent. Note that in case of equity and real estate, your capital will appreciate also. In the bond, your principal does not appreciate. You get a fixed return only. Now, once we are done with cash flow, let's talk about low risk, low gain investments. PF, PPF, gratuity, gold. These are all low risk, low gain investments. Retirement, PF, PPF, gratuity, gold, pension, annuities. All these are low risk, low gains. The gains look very good. Say when you take the policy. However, at maturity, the amount is so paltry, it usually makes no sense to economics at your family level. High risk, high gain investments, crypto, trading, these are technically not investments, but they are high risk, they give high gains in the short term. Crypto in the medium term, here I'm talking about crypto that you have bought with certain logic. For example, a lot of people in the US right now are buying the crypto, which is aligned with Donald Trump's possible election. If he doesn't get elected, those coins will crash. If he gets elected, they will make 10x, 20x, 100x kind of gains. Long term business investments. For example, you have invested your money in someone else's business, pre IPOs, small caps. So in the long run, you will get multiples 10x, 20x, 100x, maybe even more. But then you need to be really patient. There are certain exotic options. I still call crypto exotic. In medium term, crypto stock options offered by your company. I call them exotic because the gains are usually very high unless you are tricked by your company. For the risk you have taken, the risks are pretty high because you have spent 5 or 10 years of your life. You might be creating your own intellectual property, maybe a patent that will get you a lot of money in the long run. Long term, a lot of people invest in art, stock options, IP, they again appear here. Note that high risk, high gain and exotic options have nothing in the retirement row because at retirement age, unless you have a huge amount of money, you would not want exposure into these kind of investments because you can't go back to work at this stage. Hope you learned something new, especially in alignment with the 1, 2, 3, 4 portfolio theory. I started this series last month. There are several videos already released. Just to reiterate, I'm talking about one combined portfolio growing two times, benefiting from India's economy growing from $4 trillion to $7 trillion in the next four years. Feel free to add a comment if you disagree with something or if you have an additional point. If you want me to clarify anything, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to respond back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.